Come on then. Let's investigate this person or dead body. I haven't figured out which. There's some tar, an empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tar. Two empty bottles of Tulula, vodka and a can of black port and porter. It's all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis, strawberry liquor. Plus, some pills in our bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy, the lieutenant looks in the can, eye watering from the smell. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Examine the cigarettes. Whoever tossed it in here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shis Kebab Revashorl. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. Working class corpse. A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Half of his body had slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the left leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two week old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. The lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever he is, he's been dead for two days no longer. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through the bomber jacket. We need to investigate. Another dead body, this is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day, just another dead body. Breathe. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud cake boots, beige trousers and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Search the pockets. Folded library card. You find some sunflower seed and a rain soaked library card folded in two. His jacket feeds the sodden and heavy under your hand. Good, we should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man. The man has fallen through a crack and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. Only his feet still tingling in the rough in through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. 40 grams of pure al alcohol, the bottles of wine, or one and a half spirits examine his face. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height 170 to 175, curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60. He was confused when he died, confused and alone, most likely overcome with an awful surprise of it all. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. What about the surroundings? There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby and chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Be very, very careful where you step here. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair on the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is where he came out of himself, drop by drop when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? It's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 litre Tulula vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits with a slight touch of methanol. Menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Tear all around us. He looks at the two other bottles near the coin operator viewer. Then at your yellow plastic bag. I prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. True, it feels disrespectful. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rabowski, spearmint chewing gum, green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half a gear from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is in there, solidified on the lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is. The man shudders from the cold. 
I've seen it before, almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum, it's always the same. In a ditch off a road below the 881, he thinks, a young father, then he shakes his head to make the memory stop. I'm tempted to step on the floorboard. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. You'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way you came. But that's just lazy assumption. What do you think? At least this man knew how to party. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. This is an omen, a sign from above. Don't start drinking again. He looks like me. What we are witnessing here is a demise of a great party beast. Looks just like another drunkard. I think labelling him as an alcoholic is a bit premature. We don't know anything yet. We do know that he was married. Kim points at the ring on his man's left hand. The flesh around is swollen. We hold on. Do you think this could be the man that... Linked to the girl at the bookstore? The, the woman that was there that we were trying to force a crime investigation on. <laughs> but you're right, let's not rush ahead. For now, all we know is that he's unidentified. What do you think happened? Death by misadventure. Slipped and fell through the boardwalk. Could it be related to the lynching, Ruby? No. Yes, but what if there's a killer on the loose? You're right, connecting it with the lynching is a stretch. Do you think he was drunk? Definitely. Liver failure. Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behaviour. But I think death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Right. What should we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. What about a field autopsy? It isn't necessary because the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. I say we should just write down head trauma. But isn't that a little sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have that much time or resources to spare. We found him, we should finish this. All right, we should first examine that library card you found, okay. Nice, look what we got. Apricot chewing gum scented one. Right, hold on before I read this, I'm taking a drink. August the 2nd, early late summer. You're getting off the streetcar in Le Jardin, east of the river. Her father and mother are middle class. The nylon of her little jacket rustles next to you, in the dark, like autumn leaves. Her heels click on the pavement. You're walking up through the gate in front of her parents' house. She takes out her chewing gum and you kiss her. A feeling like electricity flows through your whole body. Immediately, you know that you've entered a completely different world. Plus two perception, but trail lingers everywhere. That's a pretty good skill. I don't really want to lose... How much is this? 6 hours 23 minutes. Fuck me. I'm going to wait till that finishes before I find out what it does, before I decide which I want to get rid of. I'm probably going to get rid of Aces High, you know. Our Lord has got two plus points. We'll figure it out later. Right, what's this? We need to look at the card. The library card is folded in two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Majon. Expires July 53. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. Fuck, I knew it. It, it. This is definitely the husband of the girl at the fucking bookstore. It's too much of a coincidence. You find a list of books written in pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve. The M. The Vault. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre, some thrillers too. Look at the backside. 
If lost, please return the card to a library. The library dialed that. Or visit us, Metro Street 78 Jamrock. Business hours, 09 to 18. Good, he takes note. We should give them a call from my Kanima. See if we can learn anything about M Billy Majan. Okay. This coin operator viewer has been put out of order for years. Stop messing with the viewer and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. Right, wait there, wait there. Just out of complete curiosity, I want to step on the floorboard. Fuck it, let's be reckless. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was what caused the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waving chain and below. Something cracks beneath your feet. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Right then. Still, the problem is, how the f... Where's that last trap? Is it down here? There, is that it? On the roof. Fell building, west. It's definitely over this way. Boat houses. Fuck the boat houses. Beams are splintered. The bridge didn't collapse on its own. Aha, this is it. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building loom over the reeds. They whisper amongst themselves confidently. Snowflakes cling to their shivering stems. When this district was booming, the reeds were kept at bay. Nothing obscured. Reach for the trap. Light and silent. As you pick it up, something's different here. Oh my god, please be it. Look inside. No locusts. No phasmid either, but still. Look closer still. It might be invisible. The lieutenant studies the trap with you. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy, messier than the others, like someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Something may have messed with it. What if it was the phasmid? Yeah, but what if it was the phasmid? What if it ate and got out? Right. It doesn't look like he thinks you're right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologist to figure out now, he adds, for clarity. We're not cryptozoologists, we're cops. A cold gust of air dries your sweaty face as you look to the dark shadow. The fell building in the distance, drawing you to it. What a strange sensation. Once this is done, you should ask the wind again. Right then. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to quickly go and get the signatures of the two people in the the fish village thing. I'm going to go and post the letter, then I'm going to go and see the fat guy. What is this? Primer for small kids. Use interact to interact with the thing. Not yet. We'll do it later. I haven't got much time. I think that guy goes home at one o'clock, doesn't he? I'm pretty confident he does leave work at nine o'clock. So we've got an hour. Our tenant. 
The policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I was asked to get your signature. Aye, what's this about? She takes the document out and squints at her eyes. Come on now, I can't read all of this scribble. Tell me what it says. Everett wants to turn part of the village into a little youth centre. Ha! She lifts the paper very close to her face and studies it in intently. I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is going to be a street. The best part. The part we need to get out of our houses. Have you asked Lillian about this? I won't even consider signing until I know she's on board. Okay. I found the jacket I was looking for, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can. Oh, that's nice. It's going to take about half an hour. Okay. Yeah. We must run around carelessly. It would be torture to stay put. I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. The lieutenant says, rubbing his thigh. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it. 30 minutes is too much. Right, Lillian. Lillian. Hmm. We might have to have a different approach. Aye, the sea's going to calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? So I must have found a place to go. But I, I have to do this when Kim's gone. Okay. I was asked to get your signature. Were you? Her eyes dart back and forth on the paper. Hmm. This is by saying I agree to living with construction noise. What exactly is a union building? Everest planet to turn some of the village into a youth centre. What a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought of that. Her voice trails off. Thought what exactly? That Everett and the Union have nice plans for anything. I thought that they, they only cared about themselves. She shakes her head. Well, I guess Union members have children too. Give her the pen. There you go. Done. She gives the documents one more look then shakes her head, signs it and hands it back to you. Here you go. Why did you sign it? I shouldn't have. No, no, it's a youth centre. Why shouldn't you? That's what I asked you. She tilts her head. It's a youth centre and I have children. Got to give them something else to do. Right. Be seeing you. Right, we'll get the old woman to sign it and we'll be off. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can Lillian. I help you with? Shut up, man. Lillian should let her sword make her decision. The girl just doesn't have the head for it. She sets out shortle. Coarse like a raven's claw, cow. A raven's cow. Call. Either way, I don't. I won't sign. You promised. You need to check your facts, officer. Her bony finger pointing at you. Soapy water dripping in the skirt. I said no such thing. So it was a test. Aye. Lillian's not the only one who's too trusting. What do you have against the Union? I've seen it all before. You think they've got an interest as hard? Rich men are always selling poor men promises that they never plan to keep. She pulls a dark red rag out of the bucket and puts it back. What can you suggestion to convince her I'll get this? Then the poor get pushed out of their homes and the rich get a little richer. That's the way it goes, so no, I don't trust the fat man and neither should you. Well, I don't trust him, but it's a means to an end for me, so unlucky mate, I'm going to suggestion the shit out of you. Bang. Right, I think that's it. Sign it, bitch. Our tenant, the policeman. Done. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Logic and reason won't work on this old bat. Better go for shameless emotional manipulation. What's a grandmother's deepest vulner vulnerability? Children. Does this feel like a good thing though? It doesn't, but what's going to happen to Lillian's kids? The twins and little Lily. What do you mean? What's going to happen? They're going to grow up, of course. I raised my own kids in this village, and they're doing fine for themselves. 
I didn't end up like the moribund alcoholics, point to the drunks. No, they're good kids. I brought them up the right way. There's a note of defiance in her voice. Are they here now? No, the old woman says. Her cloudy eyes darting sideways. They move to Farborough. Farborg for work. And what do you think Lillian's kids are going to do when they grow up? Well, I imagine they'll grow up and leave too. You've got her. Now just reel her in. And then what? Then the old woman exhales. She stares at the ground, unable to finish the thought. You have her. Now twist the knife. Wait. Let her come to it herself. Look. Say nothing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the su suggestion here. I don't believe the fat man's youth centre is gonna change anything. But what other choice do we have? It's not like the coalition government is coming to save us. I won't be around much longer anyway. Not with the dampness in my bones. She looks at her knees. If they want to take a chance, who might to stop them? You've got to put the you've got to put the kids first. Aye, we do, we do. A hint of sadness passes through her face. But how do we do that? You can start by signing this. <laughs> <laughs> right, she's done it. Excellent. See? That you didn't just get us all screwed. I might be half blind, but I have a good memory for treachery. The lieutenant gives you a look and sighs. Let's go and mail it. He's not dissatisfied with you, but with himself. Right then. Let's go and post this bad boy before it's too late. And go and see Everett. That's it, I just remembered his name, Everett. What, what, what's this? What's this? Sounds of life in the north. A washed, washboard scrums filth from the fabric. So I can get that jacket clean. That's a nice thing. Because I was actually just going to go and give that back to the guy. Like as it is. But I might keep the jacket for myself if it's good. I wonder if the guys... The zoologists are back in the world in the rags. You know what I mean? Since the bridge is open, I told them about it. I can speak to them there. I'll, I'm just going to peek my head in to see if they are. But I want to post this letter first. I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Other than kicking, drop the white envelope into the mailbox. You drop it in, it lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail is collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. For good or ill, the deed is done. Let's go back to Everett. Let's. But first, let's have a quick sneaky peek, peek in here. Ah, look, they are there. Excellent. So we'll come back and speak to the the zoologists after speaking to Everett. Now the thing is, right, the thing is here. What's the best stats to have when speaking to Everett? You know what I mean? Because he's a sneaky little bastard. Suggestion probably won't work on him. Um, I'm not entirely... Whoa, what's this? Stop. Ah, new items to check out. I'm just going to go in and what I'm going to do is I want to try and make sure that none of my gear has got any negatives on it. I want to try and touch as, as many bases as possible. I still don't know who Rene is. Or is Rene the guy outside? Because I've got that photograph for him, haven't I? 
I'm just gonna click on this guy to see if he's called Rene. No. It's not. Or is Renee the guy sitting outside? We'll figure it out later. It's one of the quests I've got, I just I've just remembered about it. Renee. Right this scummy little bastard. Minus one perception, plus two logic. I think I'll take the logic because my perception's quite high. Minus one half life plus one suggestion. I don't really need suggestion. I'll take the RCM commander's uniform. Plus one rhetoric. Minus one empathy. Pain threshold volition empathy. I want to wear that. Minus one visual calculus, I actually one visual calculus. Right, let's try this. This is not a fishing rod, is it? What? What's not a fishing rod? Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handful sometimes. He can, he's a twat. But he's, he's actually... He is a twat, but he's actually alright. Now, what can Everard Clare do for you today? I mailed the signatures you asked me to mail. The golden boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. He clapped his hands together like a child who's just been offered cotton candy. Of course, I already knew this. My friend the mailman confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a bright future. And you've proven yourself as someone I can trust. Someone I can really do business with. You're in my inner circle, you two. Mr. Kitsuragi. He nods to the, to the lieutenant, smiling broadly. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun. Nothing is off the table. Hear that? You did it the honest way. You got the real signatures and now he's happy well done. I don't know. Your dirty f forgery fingers aren't sure if playing this one straight was the right thing to do. Well, it's done. Finally answered. Ask away. What was the catch? There was no fine print Harry he leans forward, but I do hope all that construction noise and limit limited street access encourages some people to move. After a year of that ruckus, who wouldn't? <laughs> Oops, yes, the noise will do the trick, it'll be terrible. I don't think it will actually, it probably does, it's a shithole anyway. And when they do, he holds out his index finger, you'll have a good place to go. I'm currently working on renovating that building near the roundabout into affordable workers' places, palaces. So the village is doomed, the lieutenant says grimly. You were there, you saw the place, a wasteland, there's nothing left. But mark my words, officers, he slams his fist on the table, causing some of the coffee to spill. We are going to reset it. Reset, he repeats. I have big plans for Martinez, and they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That island will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. Harry, imagine a youth centre supermarket church complex, employing hundreds, no thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turn into low-income housing. He leans forward. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking the district back. The war is 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. And life. Nod. I knew you, you were a man of the people, Everett. Youth supermarket church complex. Do you really expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. I got the centre. I got room for a retail complex, and in four years I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. The pain is true, he's seen the kids do worse than that. Sounds like you got this, you can rely on my vote, I knew you were up to something. 
Damn right I'm up to something, Harry. The fist lands on the table again. I'm going to make the working man as rich as Joyce Messier. A true flash of anger in him he, as he thinks of her. Can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. He turns solemn. Your gun was found two days ago with holding this information weighed heavily on me but it had to be done. Fine, where is it? An old woman has it and let me tell you, Harry, where on the street is she's a character so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. So the gun's still with the woman who bought it from Roy? Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. He smiles, shakes his head in wonderment. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway. Union boys are going to help you fix it, he winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbours of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me in my... Debardier's union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're going to have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous could she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. <laughs> there it is again, the pigs, the Roy said. Not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. A smile flickers in the corner of his mouth. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. Can you set up a meeting? I already have. He holds out his index finger. Tonight, starting at 10 o'clock. Excellent. Near the old fish market on the coast. Okay, I know where that is. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now he claps his hands. Back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 10 till 2. Okay. More fun stuff. He looks at you. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Did you order the hangman killed? Order it. You know my men did to kill him. He told you. It was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had it. I would have had to do it myself. And I'm too fat for that. What do you gain from him being dead? Why, a war, of course. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kistiragi. Have victory to gain. We're going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realise there is a war. They're trained military people. Aren't you afraid for your men? Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1. And that's just Martinez. With all the union unions in Revachol and with my public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them. The fascists hate them. Even the moralists think they're in bad taste. How is this connected to the strike? There is no strike. Only war. Class war. Or in business terms, a drawn raid. Or wait. He pauses to rub his chin. Is that what, when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take. Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck wild pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in. Yes. It's also why I've let that midget Gormont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her arsehole. She has no chance. What? Tits from her arsehole. It's a local saying. Why you tell me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. He looks at the swordfish clock and nods. It's already happening. How are you going to fund the harbour? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are we going to be flowing through here? How am I going to replace all the contracts we lose once the popo hits the fan? The poo poo hits the fan. The clients who'll ditch us, Harry. We've thought of everything. We've been running back channel negotiations with all the major clients. I think the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martinez. With renowned deals sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping these containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go with our parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pressure to pursue 
bold exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid Mr. Kitsuragi. These are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical fa factories on the Samorian Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babies, people with disabilities. That's just the tip of the iceberg though, isn't it? Company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. He makes air quotes. Has bad optics. May be Ill illegal in some countries. The Debadoise Union. However, we're all about the large volume column. We're going to transport the living daylights out of those merch, Harry. And the kids in the street can get speed in pyroholidon. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I've got no idea the things you just mentioned, he smiles. So he is going to do it. If I were to supply in greens for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share and keep the stuff far away from Martin Hayes. Is Ruby helping you secure this fantastic share? Harry, if I were supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. The lieutenant nods slowly understood. Interesting stuff, I just want to solve this murder, okay? You know why you're such a good detective, Harry? You don't get sidetracked. You care about the people you're supposed to protect, not the systems that may or may not be unethical. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is but a small part of Martinez. Say nothing. Let's look at the big picture. Blah, blah, blah. Young mothers stop businesses. Models want to walk catwalk, etc. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. Let's keep focusing on the drug trade. He was about... He was almost admitting to it. Okay then. Hold on, I don't want to look at the big picture. I just want to look at the drug trade you almost admitted to. No, no, Harry. That's boring, he sighs. All right, it's gone. The hypothetical raw materials trade is off the table. Such a small and insignificant slice of revenue. I'm cutting it. Boys, he looks around in the container. Harry felt queasy about it. We're not doing it. Can we talk about my beautiful incorporated martinez? Hmm, okay. Honestly, I'm, it's not my place to judge your expression and opinion. The length you're willing to go to to keep your nose clean is remarkable. He stares at you lovingly. You will always have a warm bed in Mr. Clay's household, my friend, and a special place in the future of Martinez. Who killed the hanged man? No idea. Could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Everett Clay. Couldn't have done it without him. A guy, huh? How do you know it's a guy? I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was the mob, or maybe he killed himself because he was a close so closet socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. How many of you guys are here? 2,372. Can I ask you more? Can I ask you about more specific Union members? You're way past specific Union members now. This is big time. That's it. Great, Harry. I think we've truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardois Union. Suddenly, there's sadness in his tone. This, he points to you then himself, has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door's always open. Remember the container I told you about? Turns out there's a mega rich light bending guy inside. Mega rich bending light guy. Oh my god, how did that get in there? He's, he's so rich he could get in anywhere. He's so rich he could get in anywhere. Damn it to hell, Harry. He slams his fist on the table. I specifically told my guys to check all the containers for mega rich light bending guys. Nothing can stop an innovative mind. <laughs> Honestly, Harry, we might be moving to a... 
transport of drugs through this harbour, but I won't be caught transporting the life bending mega rich. He shakes his head. I have a reputation to protect. Yes, the transportation of the mega rich should be more tightly regulated. You should be honoured by the presence of his Magnus. He was half Revisholian blood and amassed the wealth using the mysterious bond of nationhood. Harry. It's beginning to dawn on me that you're a real fascist. A mega fascist who imagines mega rich like Ben and fascists. I love it. Thank you for sharing the facet of yourself with me. He bursts out laughing. I should have to think what you're get going to tell me next, Harry. I think that's it. There was a bullet in the hangman's head. So they shot him. Sounds pleasantly surprised. He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd, the man shrugs. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I looked into the yard. That's it. Job's done. So, 10 o'clock, we've got a meeting at the fish harbours. Well, the good thing is we've got time because I want to go and speak to the zoologist guy. Tell him that we've checked all the traps and see where that goes from there. Go over there. Is this Renee? Wait there, wait there. Ask Renee about the photo. Hopefully this is him. I keep forgetting what this guy's name is. I think it's Renee. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Who the fuck is Renee? You work. Oh, is Rene this guy down here? The weird one that we got the key for the truck. He looks like a Rene, this guy here. Oh, look. No, that's it's Tommy. The cop who turned me into a bad person. Oh, Didums. I don't know who Rene is. It's not this woman, is it? Loman, you caught me at an opportune moment. This awful weather gives me away. You can entertain me with your questions. You hear that, Lawman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing, I just don't think she's connected to anything. He's worried, but not for her, for you, hmm. What is it about this woman if she's not connected to anything? Should you drive a lorry if you get like this? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best around. I drive routes no one else will.
Nah, that's nothing. Well, I've got no idea who Rene is. Sorry, but... Oh, wait there, Rene, is he not one of the bowlers? The guys who like the ball. What else do we need to do in the car? What do we need to do in the car? Ring someone. Fuck yeah, we do. We can do that later. Who is Rene? It's such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I hate the citizens, Felicia? What is fine? Officer! Rene. God damn it. Pull yourself together, Rene. What do you want? Do my bells mean anything to you? Show him the flower. Aha! Secret task complete. Ask the player about my bells. He glances at it and frowns. I prefer the old name, Insulin and Lily. Girls brought them to young cadets when they entered service. Wearing them on your cap was supposed to bring good luck. Hold on. This is a royalist military tradition. They used to be, he says, says with a sigh. But the communists, communards were fond of them too. Called them revolutionary flowers, bells of the revolution. Did they bring you good luck? You know what? He falls silent. And the emerging smile withdraws. No, they brought me misery, false hope and disappointment. The revolutionary snuff sullied them. You stirred up some bad memories there. But it wasn't the revolutionaries that sullied the idea for you, was it? He looks at the old soldier almost gently. She gave them to me too, and your jealous little heart just couldn't accept it. Enough, he cuts sharply. I can go over these matters in details with you, Ga Gaston, but not while we have company, so officers? My bells don't blossom yet, do they? The lieutenant quickly asks. Maybe on some remote part of the city they do, the old carabiner shrugs, but I think you have to wait for at least a month. I found your guard booth. Yes, the Union pays me to stand vigil during the nights. He looks down. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. I don't sleep more than a few hours every night in any way. Money is tight, he adds with a slight sigh. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does, he nods. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. I was on a two-week leave since last Monday. So who was working the shift that night? No one. Look, officer, his partner jumps in. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never needed one before Rene. It's mostly decorative. So it doesn't matter if you're there or not. The possibility of someone being there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Okay. Evar created this job for Rene because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honour and pay... TST isn't something a man can live off. Hmm. Rene is but one man. We need a program to get all the elderly back in the job market. Rene should rent out his services, invest for profit, get a few more guys, expand and repeat. Wage work is dead end. There's absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. It's my side thing too. Proudly hold out the bag. A decorated Kingsman. I want to say, you should rent out the services. Yes, yes, yes. The Carabiner utters angrily. Can we conclude the topic? He's not going to become an entrepreneur. I saw a picture in there. His features soften and gets a cold look. She's nobody. This is none of your concern, and I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jean-Marie Brolin. Gaston speaks with a soft voice. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Got it, thanks. Right. Right, hold on. I want to conclude that there. I want to come back to these guys later, but... I need to get into the... The world and the rags to speak to the, the zoologists. I hope they haven't went to bed. I know it's nine, nine o'clock, but... Hopefully they're here for a lot longer. I've got an hour before I have to get over the road. Actually, I've got a bit longer because they're here from, what did he say? 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock in the morning. So I've actually got a lot of time to play with. Yes, they're still here. Excellent.
It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Okay. Oh, sweetie. I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Not at all. It was a truly epic long distance trek. Truly a lot of legwork. My partner adores doing these kind of things. The lieutenant is still cashing his breath. Item gained. Eight eyed terror torn tie. Here, I want to give this to you as a small token of my gratitude. She hands you a thin ribbon held together by a silver bird skull. It's a tie. Mesk in origin. The pin is antique. Quite special. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. So how do I tell them about? Shit! The smoke on the balcony? Fuck, we're gonna do that, haven't we? Fuck, the perfect time. The problem is. Talk to me. <laughs> there we go. Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He tries to play it cool, remain professional, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. So I check the traps. Good, okay. He breaks his command. And one of them was empty. Completely empty, the cryptozoologist's eyes grow wide. Surprise, tempered with fear and trepidation. He doesn't know what to think yet. Maybe you're joking. Yes, there was nothing in the trap. No locust, no phasmid. No locust, but no phasmid either. That's not ideal, but he rubs his chin. The old woman's face lights up. It just means the insulin in phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Of course, the detective whispers to himself, more clever. You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. It might behove you to tread lightly. Yes, the Phantasmodera. Phantasmodia picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news. Though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps to make them more secure. His companion sighs. Another trip to the reeds. Yes, that's exactly what it is. What a deft hunt at this phasmid. Of course, be sarcastic. I'm not, I'm being serious. He misinterprets your words, unless you have an alternative hypothesis and would like to venture. Mine stands okay. Actually, no. His tone changes. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now and brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Society Cryptozoologist D. Revachol is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Thank you, it's an honour, he says with a straight face, then turns to you. We should probably return to our main investigation. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organisation, is it? The lieutenant looks out of the window impatiently. I want this, but I don't want to fail this. Right, we're going to do it. I'm, I'm balls deep in cryptozoology. We're fucking doing this. We're doing it, baby. 97%, let's do it. Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design yes. of a new trap. Yes, yes, you can tell me all about that trap when you, when I, when I aim to help you some more. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken, most likely the hands of a young person, hands small enough to fit inside the trap too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. I think a little hooligan called Kuno might have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan, but what would a child want with bugs? Continue. A shadow of worry passes over the woman's face. Oh my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favourite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favourite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. The man turns to his companions. Well... 
I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play Susan Terry. But no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Okay? Really, Gary. The woman's voice is a little shaken suddenly. We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play Suzerian... Suzerian D, but... Lana, I'm sorry. But you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs, he looks at his tea. Morel, it's been fun, really, but I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no, no need to apologise, Gary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll take this rain check on that gamer today and we're gonna follow this through. Oh man, we're so run out of time on everything we want to do. I'm gonna talk to Gary. Who the fuck's Gary? Is that Gary there? Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. Right, that's nothing. Come on then. 2120, I think I'm going to quickly go and speak to the guy. Tell you what. What should we do? Tell what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to load my game up which I've just saved because I wasted one minute talking to Gary and I didn't even end up talking to him and that minute could be like the chance between us completing our task tonight and not because we've got a lot of things going on around about nine ten o'clock. I've got to go and speak to the skinny guy in the apartments and I've got to go and speak to say 2119 perfect let's leave and I've got to go and speak to Kuno And I've got the meeting to attend to where I get my gun back. All important things. So I'm actually going to call it an episode here. And in the next episode I'll probably go and see... I'll probably go and see Kuno first. Actually no I won't. I want to go and see the skinny guy first. See what he's got to say. I'm going to go and speak to Kuno. And then we're going to go, go across to the meeting and get my gun back. Okay lads. Hope you enjoyed the episode. See you in the next one.